Hey everybody, back again. Ah, uh, been an interesting week. Country's pretty much shut down, so um, good time to tie some flies. Yes, I have my uh, apron on. Reason being, I tie with this because I tie a lot of flies, which you guys already know that. Um, but it prevents me from getting a mess all over the house. And uh, for what we're going to tie today, which is exactly this fly right here, has a deer hair head on it. Um, you're going to make a mess. So, um, this fly here today is what I call the alter ego. And the reason why I call it the alter ego, and this configuration right here is probably my favorite way to tie it. You can also tie it with a marabou tail. That color. I really like it with the you know, American rooster saddles, personally. Another way you can do it was with hen feathers. We fished these on the white this year. And the fishing wasn't lights out, but this caught some fish, and this did really well around my neck of the woods. Um, you can imagine you get some good swimming swim out of that guy. You can also do, like I said, multi-tone colors with, you know, marabou and whatnot. Um, but I really do dig the uh, rooster saddle tails. So that's why we're going to tie this guy today. This exact fly that you see right here in this olive, there's some yellow in it as well. Probably can't quite make it out that well on the video. This guy swims really nice. You can add dumbbells to it, whatever. Um, you're probably wondering where I came up the name from. Some of you know of that beer from Treehouse. That's not where the name came from. Uh, the name actually came from, and you can hear me use that word, platform if you can't stand but the mass avengers of fly <clears throat> that i tied several years ago um that's evolved and this is kind of what it's turned into now but if the <clears throat> mass avenger spawned you know a brother or an alter ego it would be this cat this fly right here is basically this very very same fly with a couple of modifications to it as the Masked Avenger without the resin or fish mask head on it and instead you put this awesome very broad um, deer head that we're going to tie today. I'm going to show you how I carve this guy too. It's a little different than some of the others. Nothing crazy different but um, it's all gathered and garnered its inspiration from the Zoo Cougar or the Heifer Groomer or the articulated zoo cougars, what Kelly called it years ago, because um, it gives you that nice darting style head. This fly has no weight to it as well, so you're going to get, you know, that neutral buoyancy out of it. And you can tie this in a variety of sizes. I have some triples and um, some single articulated ones that are like this that you could use for musky and pike and stuff. <clears throat> but I, you know, I'm not going to talk too much about that. This I'm going to tie you the trout sized one of this today, which also hammers smallmouth bass and just about anything. This fly does all kinds of cool stuff and it darts through the water column kind of like a swim bait and that's all just achieved from that deer hair head. Um, really really light, it's got this thing breathes in the water and, and the key to this fly, and you'll see when we tie this thing today, is less is more. I can't stress that enough. I've seen a lot of guys try to tie with fox hairs, fox hair in this and other materials and there's really not a lot of material in this when you break this thing down if you tie it correctly very very easily can be overdressed so I'm going to show you guys how to tie this one today uh, we're going to do it in an olive and yellow con uh, configuration um, and as I'm going I'll talk about some of the finer points of it um, let's get at it all right folks so close up this is exactly what we're going to be tying right here this particular fly as I told you before it's basically the cousin to the massive Avenger with the deer hair head all right there's a whole slew of different ways you can tie it, but I'm going to tie it for you today in the way that I like to fish the most. This was last year probably my best streamer with all my customers out there on the water. So the hook I have in the vise is a Arex 610 Trout Predator. The one in the vise right here is a number two. This is going to be for our rear hook. I'm using a Vivas um, 140 an olive. 
So I'm just going to start by laying a thread base down. The next thing I'm going to do, and you probably saw this before, but I'm going to do a very similar technique that we used. We got two of the virtually the same Whiting American rooster hackles here that we're going to use for the tail. These are two that I already handpicked. Kind of measure these up as to how I want them and kind of see they come down to a nice thin point. I'm just going to peel away the fluff off of both of these. And you can kind of see I brought my thread right to the point where the beak of the hook is. Once I've done that, I'm going to take a pair of flat pliers and I'm just going to flatten these out a little bit together. By doing that, it'll help me affix these things right to the side of the hook shank. Before I affix the near side one, I'm just going to take some Loctite gel, put a drop right on there, generous drop, mind you. It goes on either side of the hook shank. I take my first feather on the near side, press that stem right to the side of the shank. That's going to keep that feather flat and on the side. I'm going to do the same thing on the far side with the other feather. So the big thing is just to kind of press it right on there, as you see here. So let the two of them go right down the side of the hook shank. Apologize for the background noise, it might be my furnace that's about to kick in here. If it kicks on, I'll shut this thing down. Once I kind of have those two in place, I'm just going to kind of run my thread. And as you'll see here, those two feathers are just going to be around either side of the hook shank, just like you see here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some... <clears throat> you can use micro lateral scale or um, Cascade Crest Crinkle Flash, which is what I'm using for this particular color. And this is a peacock. I'm just going to take one strand, fold it in half, and then cut it. And then I'm going to run these on both sides of the feather. So I'll tie those two in on the near side, and I want those to be, and you'll see once I bring this up on the other side there, I want them to kind of mirror the center of the feather, come forward, and then I'm going to reverse it over to the other side as you see here, and I'm just going to turn it in the vise so I can line it up with the stem, and then once that's in place I'm just going to work that feather or that flash right back down. And you want that flash to be roughly the length of the feather. So I've done that, then I'm going to re-advance my thread. You can kind of see a little bit of a thread bump here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a... <clears throat> this is a lemon yellow sparkle brush is what I'm using for the interior flash, but you could use pretty much anything on these. I've used uh, sparkle brushes, UV polar flash, or chenille rather, you name it. Whatever floats your boat. Then I'm just going to tie that in. wrap over that wire and bring it right up behind the eye and then as I wrap this I'm not going to use the rotary function like I did in the last video I'm just going to preen the fibers to one side all in one direction and that's going to make it lay back like a hackle and as you can see here I'm using open spiraled wraps about an eighth of an inch apart and that's just going to help that flash um, pretty much breathe and lay rearward as well what you'll see here is when you know the flash is really just a filler if you don't want to put flash in this you could just basically put a schlapping feather in there um, I'm tying some pike flies for a couple of good guide friends of mine and they claim they get their bigger fish on flies with no flash so one of the patterns that I tie we're basically taking the flash out of it and um, sorry about that folks my furnace kicked on so I had to kind of pause things so once I got that in place I'm just gonna cut that off with my bad scissors Flatten out that burr. Put a little bit of a thread base on there. And then we're going to take some fox fur like we always do. Notice this might have a penchant for this stuff. And we want the stuff on the back to be shorter than what's going to be up front. So roughly like that. I have more than I need. So I'm going to chrome out the under fur. Just like you see here. Comb it out a couple times. 
And remember what I said before, less is more. You don't want a lot on here. If you put too much on here, it's going to impede this fly's ability to kind of really move through the water. Let's take a look at what I got. Trim the butt ends even. We're going to reverse tie it, flip it around. Like I've done before, this can be in the round, so I'm going to grab it, roll it with my fingers. You see here. Make sure that it's all 360 degrees around the hook. And then we're just going to build a nice little thread collar here. Once we're kind of happy with how that looks, then you're going to take your little clear piece of tubing, push back on it, just like you see here. Pull our thread through. Whip finish. Now the rear section will be done. Cut that off. Put a little bit of cement. UV resin, which I'm going to do. I'm going to use some bone dry solaris on there. Those thread wraps. Boom. There's your tail. Then you're going to take your piece of wire. Uh, same wire I used in the last articulated streamer. It's going to be a 19 strand, you know, beagle line, 0 0.018 in diameter. I've already got a piece cut here. I had it set aside. Wherever the heck I put it. You know how that goes. There she is. It's roughly a little over three inches long. Run that right up through the eye. Bend it in half. Put your two 3D beads on there. And then you can set this guy aside. So typically when I'm tying a whole pile of these, I'll usually do all the tails up, add the wire and the beads, just like you see here. And let that section just sit there. There's our tail. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to put on number one, 610 ARX on the hook or in the hook in the vise. Go right back to our 140 thread. Now, you know, there's two schools of thought on this. I'm going to finish this fly with um, gel spun for the deer hair head, but I like to kind of conserve my gel spun. I don't necessarily think I need to use it for the whole fly, but if it suits you and floats your boat, you can run it through the whole front half of this if you'd like. So same thing as I did before, I'm going to try and get those two pieces of wire together. You could use that ring eye hook I showed you before, but I didn't have any more handy that I, uh, with me today. I burned through my last batch, so I'm back on this for two hooks. So you could use that MFC ring eye hook for the tail if you'd like, which will make setting up this rear portion much easier. But this is what we got. So I'm going to take three turns, roughly, over that wire. Pull it forward till it's in place. And then I'm just going to take my thread... And if you can see on here, those two pieces of wire side by side at the top of the hook shank. Alright? <clears throat> and then I'm just going to wrap my thread. Moving forward. Keep that right over that wire. Come all the way back to my starting point. Put a little more pressure on there. Open spiral wraps forward again. And then do the same rearward, right up to where my thread starts. Put a half inch so I don't walk away and lose it. Next thing I'm going to do too is put a clip on here, the tail portion, so I don't put it in my hand. Next thing we're going to do, just for filler, is we're going to take a marabou plume. Trim back what you don't need, like you see here. And then we're going to take, because you only need a few turns of this, that front portion, I'm going to wet it with my finger so it's easy to tie in. We're just going to tie that in because we're going to palmer this guy forward a bit. Roughly to about there. So just like I said before, each turn you're probably going to have to preen some of these out because you got to remember we're going right through that hook gap there. And this is just to give me a filler in the middle of that fly just like you see here. 
couple turns over, turns in front, turn it back, and then without impaling yourself on the hook point, just fold those feather fibers backwards, wrap back over to them slightly before where we started our thread. So about the halfway point between the barb and the beak. So they just kind of fold rearward. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get that sparkle brush again. So it's just going to be repeat. We're going to take our sparkle brush, wrap this down, and what you're going to see is we're basically going to be using the front third of this hook for the head. So I'm going to stop my thread right about that third way point, or just shy. Wrap this thing forward. Same thing, open wraps. Tie it off. And by doing what I did with the fibers and printing them rearward like that, they're already kind of setting in the direction I want. Flatten out that burr. Grab your flash again and get that crinkle flash. One more piece. Cut it in half. As you can see here, this is just to add a little bit of flash through the fly. Tie it in the middle so that it cuts it into two. Fold it over the other side. You're going to kind of be splitting the top just like you see here. Next thing we're going to do now, we're going to use some longer fox fur. Let's take it from the longer side. Cut it right down at the base of the hide. Same thing. I'm going to comb out all that under fur because we don't want a lot in there. The more, the more fur and fiber you have in this, the harder it is to sink this fly. And I'm going to really talk about that when we get to the deer hair on this because we're not going to be stacking deer hair on this, folks. We're going to be spinning it. And there's a big difference between how I want this head to look. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Once I get that where it is, I look at how it lines up. Trim the butt sections of that fox fur. Transition it so it's facing forward. Remember what I said, less is more. So if I got a little too much in there, I pull it out put the fiber on top, I push down on it, wrap my first turn of thread, just like so, and then take a look and see where all this material is. And if it's starting to bleed into where I, the head portion of this fly is going to be, I'm just going to slightly pull my fibers back. I'm going to build a nice little thread collar on there, making sure that's all 360 degrees around that hook. Once I'm happy with that, then I'm going to take my tube again, Burst tie this stuff. Boom, just like you see here. Make sure all those fibers are pushed rearward. Condense my thread, just like you see here. Do a few turns, put a half hitch, and then I'm going to whip finish this, just like you see here. Because I'm actually now going to attach my gel spun. What I also like to do is I'll put a little bit of resin on those thread wraps just to ensure that this isn't going to come apart in the middle of the fly. Beauty, beautiful thing you can also do too is you can take your little brush here, kind of brush this out, see how this looks, if there's any errant fibers. And then now I've got basically the front portion roughly more than halfway done. Just like you see it's tied in the round. And then we're going to move on to affixing our deer hair. All right, so here we are. We're gonna use some gel spun. This is 100 denier vivis for the head on this. Um, like I said, you could tie the entire front section of this with this style thread, but I kind of like to be a little more frugal with this because it's a little more expensive. And gel spun um, can be relatively slippery. Um, so sometimes when you're tying in other materials, it'll have a tendency to roll. It's extremely tough stuff though. Um, but I'm just going to use this for the deer hair, and this is what I spin all my deer hair with. Or if I'm going to stack deer hair, I do the same thing. So you've probably heard this said before. I know Kelly has, has stressed it many a times when he ties with his deer hair, but um, when we go to do the collar, you can see I've already pulled off. The, the hair that you want to use off the Primo strip has to be relatively straight. If it's got any kind of a curve to it, it's going to really change the, the whole dynamic of your collar. 
So I've already pulled out about a pencil's width diameter worth of hair, and now I'm using a flea comb to comb out all the under fur. And you see I've transferred that in my hand. Um, some people like to use the comb on a table. Um, this works fine for me because I feel like I can get most of the fur out, but do whatever works best for you. Once I've cut, cut all that out, you can kind of see I'm, I'm pointing to some of the bottom butt sections of this. That's the hair that's hollow and that you would spin and would splay when you put thread pressure on it. So we want to cut that out. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they go to do the collars on these types of flies is they try to incorporate all those butt sections into the head of the fly when they tie it in together and it never comes out right. You'll have a big open space. So I've put the hair in my stacker, stacked it, aligned the tips. Now I'm going to pull that out, take a measurement. So my collar is the right length. It's going to take up about a third or more than a half of the head or the overall length of that front section of fly. And then I'm going to cut off those butt sections so that I'm basically tying it in right at the point where the collar is going to start. This can be kind of tricky. It takes a little bit of practice. So I want to take that thread and just trap the very tips of those butts, just like you see here. And as you can see, I've put that pile of deer hair for my collar right in front of that big bump of Arctic Fox. You don't want to go right on top of it because it will spin and turn and go all over the place. So as you can see here, I got a nice 180 degree starburst collar. If there's any errant fibers in there, not a problem. You can cut them out like this guy right here. It's totally up to you. But that's how you're going to get your collar. And as I was saying before, if you tried to utilize the butt sections of that deer hair and figuring out oh, I'm going to use this for my collar on my head, when you go to trim this after, you're going to have this big open gap in there and it's going to look ridiculous. So rule of thumb, what you've got in there is you're going to use for your collar, use for your collar, what you're going to use for your spun head, you cut those tips off. So now I'm going to spin two bundles of hair minus the tips to make that oversized deer hair head. And the cool thing about this is you can trim this to pretty much any shape that you'd like. Um, I'll talk about that when I get into the trimming section. But I like to kind of make this relatively oval. Makes this fly swim. And as you can see here, I'm not putting that hair in the stacker. And I just kind of showed you what section I'm going to cut off. I'll basically line the tips as best I can with my fingers. There's some errant ones there. It's fine. I'm going to grab that bundle by the center, take one loose wrap, two a little tighter, and a third, and then I'm going to take my finger and my thumb, come right down on the top, push down on it, pull, and turn. By doing so, I've basically distributed that hair all the way 360 degrees around the hook. And then just going to kind of fish my thread through the front of that hair, and you see I've kind of pulled it back a bit. I'm not taking a hair packer and pushing this stuff in here super tight. As you can see, there's a lot of space in there. And the reason being, is I don't want a super, super densely packed head. Because this, if you put a super, super densely packed deer hair head on this, it's going to completely change the dynamic of this fly. It'll actually make it float more and make it very much more difficult for this fly to A, shed water, and B, penetrate through the water column. I want this fly to be neutrally buoyant, not buoyant and float on the surface. If I wanted that, then I would compress that hair with a hair packer and put an exorbitant amount more of deer hair on here. So I almost could have gotten away with one bundle on here, but I still have a big gap in the front. You can kind of see it's about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch. You want to fill all that in so that your hair goes right up to your hook eye. And as you can see here, I'm doing the same procedure. Same thing, push down. Make sure you don't trap any, pull. After you push down on it with your thumb and pulled, now we're going to try the same thing. This is the tricky part, is getting that thread um, right in front of your bundle. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, you could cut a piece of plastic and put that on there to do your whip finish. But I've done this so many times, you can pretty much just pull your fibers back, wrap with your hand to your half itch, and then I'm going to take my whip finish tool 
do a three or four turn whip finish, pulling those fibers back. So you, you got to really, there's a lot of fine motor skills going on here, pulling that hair back with one hand. and then trying to tie it on there. And as you can see, gel spun, it's flat and it's not corded. It's like a whole pile of fibers. If you don't catch it just right, it'll kind of splay as it did there a little bit. And I'm just gonna kind of do my three or four turn whip finish. Put that right up in there. And I like to cut it with a razor. Once you try to do it with a pair of scissors, sometimes it doesn't quite work. Boom, come right in there and there you go. And then we're gonna get on to trimming all this and I'll show you how I trim it. You can kind of see in a moment here that this is all wrapped all the way around the hook. So this gives you a good idea. Got a nice big star burst 360 degrees all the way around the hook shank. I'll pop that back in the vise. I, sometimes I'll trim these by hand in my hand. Other times I like to trim these while they're in the vise. Alright so what we're going to do now is we're just going to make sure that is to Basically, we're going to trim this, and the best way to do this, because I like to have a slightly rounded bottom and a rounded top on this, is to use a double-edged razor. And the easiest way to do that is to get, you know, you're only going to get a few cuts out of each one of these. So, you kind of see you can bend this in your fingers. I'm going to do this in the vise, just because it gives me a little bit of a better platform to kind of utilize my hands. So I'm going to come in on the bottom here on the underside, and just kind of trim right through as you see here. couple different ways you can do this but I want to make sure that that's all nice and relatively even on the bottom just come right in and trim it up you can get super crazy and OCD with it after the fact now the big thing is you're going to do the same thing on the top but you want to make sure you don't cut your collars nothing worse so I'm just going to take my finger come in here pull the collar back and then starting from front working right up to my finger I'm just going to kind of trim shave those fibers you can kind of do the same thing right through here just to make sure kind of get your shape i kind of done that you can kind of take a look at it <clears throat> now like I said I like to have a slightly rounded football kind of shape to it. I do a lot of the finer trimming once I take the fly out of the vise. I've got my general shape here and now I'm going to come in and I'm sure you've seen this before. I'm just going to kind of trim ever so slightly some of those fibers. I'll come in right from the rear here. Same thing on the other side. That's just to kind of give me that better shape. You can kind of go in, cut some of those longer little butt end pieces that are still in there. And you can spend a great deal of time really fine tuning and trimming this stuff up. For the ones I throw in my boxes, I'm not super, super anal about. But the ones that I put in the mail to people, spend a heck of a lot more time. Just trying to trim these up so they look pretty darn close. You come in here and kind of do a little shaving too if you want. Big thing you got to remember, like I said, is I don't want a super, super tightly packed head like you have on a bass bug. This has got to be able to shed some water, and by having, you know an airy type head to this. This is also going to help this thing kind of penetrate a little bit. It'll help it swim better in a water column. Dance a bit and do this kind of stuff. So you kind of get the idea. You see I got a couple little crazy errant fibers in here in the collar. I'll cut those out. Like I said you can get super super crazy with trimming this stuff. That's a general idea. That's what the collar kind of looks like. There's the whole body of the fly. <clears throat> There's the head. And if you look at it from the front, you can kind of see it's a little rounded on either side. So this fly is going to kind of dance and do all kinds of crazy stuff. It'll kick sideways, 
freight train, whatever. I like to fish these on an integrated sink. Uh, if you need something that gets down a little bit, you maybe I'll do another version of this. I'll show you the one with the dumbbell on it. And you put a dumbbell on there, kind of like you do on a sex dungeon. That's what the fly looks like. That's the alter ego. It's the, uh, you know, Cape Crusader of the uh, Masked Avenger. This is one of my best streamers from last year, both uh, for myself and a bunch of my customers and clients that I guided. So that's it. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments. Hope you liked it, and uh, I'll keep them coming. Thanks for tuning in.